What's up, everybody? This is Phenomenon here. I'll be your host for Ultima 4, Quest of the Avatar. Our uh, two runners here are Phoenix 4 and Oregon Mike. Um, I'll be quite blunt with all of you. I know heck all about this game or this run, so this is going to be quite <laughs> interesting for me. So how about I just let you two take it away? <laughs> well, sure. Um, also, like when we submitted this race... Our personal bests were somewhere around the 75-minute range, so we submitted a 90-minute estimate to account for uh, RNG and uh, weird things that might happen. Um, since then, we've both broken the hour mark, so I figured I got a little bit of time to give everyone a primer, um, just on a couple issues that we won't want to, a couple things we won't want to actually explain while we're actually doing them because we'll be busy doing them. Uh, about magic in this game. Um, you need it's it's two-factor authentication. You need magic points, obviously, to cast a spell, but you have to have prepared the spell first. So we mix our reagents. There are eight different reagents. I ain't getting into that. There are twenty-six different spells, one for each letter of the alphabet. Uh, the mo one you will see us using most is the blink spell. It moves us across the overworld at a very rapid rate, which is why we use it a lot. Um, so that is spell B. The mixture for that is E and D, that is Blood Moss, which is E, and Spider Silk, which is D. And so one of the lovely little jokes in the, our little community is that uh, the winner of these races is whoever can type the word bed the fastest. And since we can't mix in batches, you will see us go bed, 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 bed. So when you see us mixing spells, by all means, join in in the chat. Just bed, 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 bed. Yeah, the, the more you guys type bed, the less we have to, so that'd be great. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, the other thing I wanted to... I have already lost track. I should have taken notes. Uh, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that we have, uh, we have uh, put out an incentive out there to light up the abyss. It has been met, I understand, Philemon? Phenomenon? Yeah. <laughs> I think we've met our incentive. You'll have to give me a minute on that. I'm still... Uh... No worries. If it, if it hasn't been met, we've got lots of time to meet it, so I'll it, explain it anyway. It is um, met, yes. Light oh, up this is complete. Beautiful, beautiful. So uh, Phoenix is actually going to be the first one going into a dungeon. We run different routes, so it's going to be tough to tell who's ahead, which is also part of the fun. But Phoenix is going to go into a dungeon fairly early. His first trip down the dungeon will be in darkness. So you will see nothing, <laughs> and it's great. Uh, his second trip down, he'll light a torch. And so you can see the difference between what you've paid us for to light up the abyss and what you would normally see if you hadn't. Uh, we don't normally light up the abyss because it's slower. The game has to use some computer cycles to draw the graphics. So we generally run our dungeons in darkness as much as we possibly can. Um, the third thing I wanted to, to do is just give you the backstory. Uh, you can see on my screen a lovely little image of rolling hills, a bunch of standing stones, and a thing in the middle of it. What has happened is it, it's, you know, life is tough. Uh, so you went out for a walk one day, enjoying the lovely air, sat down for a nap. You hear a loud noise. Uh, you see a blue shimmering portal, and then you see a, hear a thing drop to the ground. And here's where we get, you pick up an amulet shaped like a cross with a loop at the top. I'm sure you can all read that. A large book wrapped in thick cloth. So this part kind of, hello, is something happening? Uh, looks right. good on my end. Looks good. Okay, good. How come my game is frozen? Oh. That's not good. That's try, less than good. Try minimizing it and bring it back up. I will do that. That's okay. Better it happen now. All right. We'll close it. And, if, it if all else fails, close it and reopen it, right? I may have just hecked up the stream for you know, so. There, can you see that phenomenon? Hey, it's nice for you to give me a handicap, but it's a bit extreme. <laughs> I don't particularly want to give you a handicap. <laughs> okay, so I... So, okay, I'll give you a little more of the story. Yeah. There, there was, there's a frame here I love to show off. So there's the, blow, the glowing portal, there's a noise. You're not going to have a chance to read this when we actually do the run, trust us. Maybe some of, the, some of these frames you can see. This is actually, I think, really pretty artwork. Um, Something glinting in the grass. This is where I was, where the game was hung. Uh, with trembling hands, you unwrap the book. The cloth is a map, and within lies not one book, but two. I actually have these books at home and the map. Um, the title them. is... I got yeah, them sitting just... next to me for good luck. Oh, nice. 
I didn't dare bring them here. Uh, the title is The History of Britannia. The other book is disturbing to look at. Small cover appears to be fashioned out of some sort of... I'm not going to go over all this. You can look all this stuff up. It's all online. Um, settling back under the willow tree, you open the book. And the game gives you directions. You read the book of history. Now, because Lord British uh, knew something of gamers and the way they were even 40 years ago... No, really. Read the book of history. <laughs> Now this this makes the one hundred percent run really long because you actually have to read it on stream. Mm -hmm. It's it's tough to do while you're trying to actually play the game. Anyway, uh, uh, the last but not least thing, um, I don't have chat open. Phoenix, I don't know if you do or not. Uh, I do now. I don't know how much I'll be paying attention to it once we actually get into the run, but I've got it open right now. Okay, um, so. Uh, phenomenon, if uh, people come up with any questions that they would like answered, mm -hmm. uh, by all means, at a quiet moment, feel free to jump in and, and answer them for us, or ask them for us, and we can answer them as uh, yeah, much as possible. Good. Yeah, awesome. Uh, I also understand we just crossed the $4,000 mark, 4000 for Ultima 4, that's great. And uh, tomorrow morning I'll be running Ultima 3, so 3000 for, oh, uh, never mind. Uh, we need to initiate a new game. We need some names. We need some names. We All need right. some names. Name bid wars. Here we go. What do we got here? Uh, Phoenix. It looks like we had $100 for Misako. Ooh. M-I-S-A-K-O. Excellent. Nice. And Organ Mike. Yes. 35 went to... One word, capital L, capital B, Lord British. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I hope I don't kill him in this run. <laughs> hey, we, so we should have had a kill Lord British incentive. Oh, geez, no, please. <laughs> okay, and uh, to the restreamer, a timer will start when we select our character gender. Uh, Phoenix, are you ready? Uh, let's see, I've got my Ultima shirt, my Ankh on. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Fantastic. I noticed you didn't say anything about socks, but whatever the case. Uh, <laughs> um, don't have any do, Ultima socks. Don't have Ultima socks. That's a shame. Uh, don't, forget you to bring, want to... don't forget to bring the uh, esoteric English humor as well. Oh, of course. Yeah, right. We won't be talking to that many people. So, uh, would, you like to give us a, would you like to give us a countdown? Right on. We can do that. All right, folks. Here we go. In three, two... One, go. All right, so I'm starting by holding down the space bar. This is a, a strategy I found out just before we did our last race, which actually saves like two seconds. Um, anyway, yeah, I used to just spam the, the keys and but just holding it down does go a little bit faster. Yeah, I think it's about two seconds over the course of this opening or something. Probably not even that. Anyway, after we read the, read the book of history, there's this Renaissance fair. We walk across it, we get free admission because of our onk, and uh, then we find a covered wagon at the far side, and we get asked seven questions about our future, and this determines what class we will be playing as. We're both going to be playing as mages, unless something has drastically changed, so which means I need to select honesty first. Wait, and I lose... not... <laughs> you mean we're not doing um, humility, shepherd run? No, we're not doing a shepherd run today. I got honesty and sacrifice so far. Every time we pick one, the other one goes away. So, honesty and spirituality for me. Ooh, okay, nice. Ooh, honest spirituality and compassion. I got valor, and I'll take spirituality instead of compassion. Uh, honesty, whatever it is, honesty, you've got to take it. Uh, I lose spirituality, which means I got valor, which isn't bad, but it doesn't give me any stats I need. May shorten my grind later. Am I looking at an abacus? You are yes. looking at an abacus-like device, yes. <laughs> and here we go into the game. Yeah. And I'm in. Volume off means that we're not getting any sound. I'm going to steal a rune and steal the box that it was sitting on. That's not a particularly honest thing to do, but that's okay. See, I don't steal the box because I'm a much nicer person. I go through and I steal a lot of money, and I actually got a fair bit of money on this one. You steal different money. It's okay. 
I know Lord Bridge told me that I could use that. <laughs> See, I'm already in um, Margot's Magic Herb Shop. She is the sponsor of this run. I'm doing the same. Um, so she's asking for a lot of money, but we're just giving her one gold out of pop. And here's my first mix. Bed, bed, chat. bed, bed, bed. Yeah. We memorize all the important ones. Okay, and I don't mix too many. I'm going to blink over here, and that's where I find the black stone. Uh, if that doesn't make any sense to you, that's okay. You'll you'll maybe figure it out by the end of the run. I we have to should, find. I thought you should both know that chat is very insistent on um, letting you know they appreciate the beds. Fantastic. I need one right now. <laughs> I'm over in the town of Vesper, and here's where I'm going to buy my weapon for most of the run. My two weapons, actually. Purchase a sling, and I also purchase flaming oils. Okay, and I finally got around to... Oh, man, and I get attacked. That's just not fair. Oh, need some gems, need some keys, and I gotta remember to buy torches. Get out of here. And so, I blinked yeah. on up to the dungeon. Mm -hmm. And I'm blinking over to the swamp. And take my first fight with an orc. And I'm going to do the rest of my mixing. Now I'm walking around a dungeon blind. If only it was audio mixing, then I would know all of everything that was happening. <laughs> That's not a skill I have. Wow, there's a lot of tech spam in these games. Yeah. Back Especially. in the day, they were like, we'll just design it like a, like an operating system, like DOS. <laughs> now, does it ever get to a point where, like, let's say you were casually playing it and just text flies by too fast? Or is that, like, basically because you're so practiced with it, you know what to ignore? That's pretty much it, yeah. Ah, shoot. I just died. Oh no. Deliberately, I expect. Indeed. I picked up orbs that increase my uh, intelligence, which gives me more mana, which also deal me 200 points of damage. And so I use them for a death warp. We have a general question in chat. Maybe one of you could uh, address. Fire away. Mike the Magician just says, how does this work? Is it like a race or something? Yeah, we're racing. Uh, the first person to get to the end wins. It's a friendly race. But you can so, see already our roots are diverged very quickly. No no death stakes here, then? No, no. Okay, next time. Well, I'm going to search for Mandrake Root. I can only do that when both the moons, which you see at the top of the screen, are in the new moon phase. Okay. So, Lord Bridge just leveled me up, and then I talked to some guards so that I can prove to them that I'm the humblest person in the world. Uh, and then I went down a level, and then I immediately started playing tag with a bunch of guards. Ah, oh, you're doing guard tag. Ooh, I got good mandrake. And then Lord British totally told me that I could take all of his gold. So, yoink. More guards want to play tag with me. Um, attacking the guards causes your virtues to go down. And the goal of the game is to be super duper virtuous. Um, so why am I doing that? Well, guards are also innocent. So when I run away from the guards, that's very virtuous of me. So I end up netting more virtue. So long as he doesn't attack them all. So long as he, when, when you attack something in town, the guards become hostile. So I'm standing here waiting for the gates to change, or for the moons to change. That's a moon gate. When I step in it, it sends me across the world to another place. I just picked up my sling. And this is another spot where I can get Mandrake. But I'm also standing in a swamp, which means I'm probably going to get poisoned. Uh, it's a thing that happens. Uh, you'll see at various times that we leave our characters poisoned. Oh, and also the, turn, the, the game will pass a turn while I stand here. It just does that once in a while. It has real-time elements, this one. 
and I'm now doing a boat grind. Hmm. A boat is required to win the game, but they spawn randomly. See, I'm poisoned. You can see the P next to my hit points. Wait, so in order to win the game, RNG has to be on your side? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Wow, that is just rude. <laughs> we have spent thousands of turns waiting for boats. <laughs> I am once more uh, purchasing large amounts of reagents at a deep discount because the shop owner is blind and can't tell that I'm not actually putting in the amount that she wants. All right, and now I'm going to fix that. So I'm going to ask for no numbers being shouted out for a bet. Because what I'm doing is buying a bunch of reagents in individual batches at the cost she's asking for. If my fingers work properly. One thing I have to do before I do my boat grind is I have to make sure that I leave a chest on the overworld map. Because if I don't do that, later on when a hot air balloon spawns, the hot air balloon will devour my boat. Instead, it'll devour the chest. And I didn't have enough money to buy my safety horse, so... See, that... That, that sea serpent could very easily have been a boat, but it hey, decided he's... not to be. Yeah. Every so often, you'll see what, what just happened on mine. You'll see the word bad command come up, and then a series of 16 digits. The 16 digits are actually our eight virtues. We need to get all of those to 99 in order to win the game. So uh, we're keeping track specifically of a couple of them. And there's this... Oh, I landed in the wrong spot. Come on. Come on. Slow progress in the mountains. And I have a silver horn. The silver horn helps us later, but it also gives me 400 points of experience, and I'm entering into my first dungeon, which is Death Star. One, two, one, two, and descend down. And now I'm going to use Z down spells, which move me down through the dungeon. And that's, I'm going to peer at a gem so I can see where I landed in level seven. And I need to go four and, oops, descend. That's right, I'm using two, one. Oh, I see a Daggett in chat. Hi, Daggett. And then we go down one more. Hi, Daggett. Good to see you. I need to heal. And I need to leave this way. This is an altar room. It connects the dungeons going, together. Hey, okay, lots of familiar faces. All right. These are insects. If I run away from them, it doesn't actually cost me anything, but I'm going to run around the room a bit to get my magic points back. And I need to this down. Hey, I got a good landing at the bottom of Covetous. And this is the Ultimate of Courage. Quickness, please. And I'm going to run right past... Wow, I just got a tremendous courage, or a tre tremendous quickness in, um, in uh, what you call it? The, uh, in, in the Ultimate Room in Covetous, the enemies did not move once. Nice. Someone I got wants to know, in there. Yeah. Someone wants to know how many of these uh, virtue point battles you have to do. Uh, how yeah. many virtue point battles? Um, yeah, they said you get virtue points for certain battles, and they're wondering how many. Hey, I got a boat. Um, oh, you get right. one virtue point per um, per battle, but it's a fifty-fifty chance you get it. So. Oh, more RNG then. Yep. Yep. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, and I'm up here. I'm going to take my first break of the, of the run and enter the Shrine of Honesty, meditate on honesty for three cycles. This is a required part of the game. We need to become an eight-parts avatar. To become an eight-part, uh, uh, to get one-eighth of that part, you need to raise a virtue to 99, and then you need to meditate on that virtue for three cycles. This is a required part of the game. It's simply a thing we must do if we want to win. If you get to the bottom and you're not, if you get to the bottom of the abyss and you're not an eight parts avatar, it says you are not ready. Kicks you back out to the surface and says, you know, you have to go back and try again. This is one of those things we hope doesn't happen. Part of 
partial avatar hood in the virtue of honesty. After all that stealing. Oh, I just got poisoned to the last step. Okay, this is the Lyceum. Now that I have keys, I can come in here and grab one of the other important items, the Book of Truth. Again, it will give me 400 uh, experience, but also it will, uh, it's one of the items required to get into the Great Stygian Abyss. Uh, notes, thank you. And I used a gate travel spell, and I'm going to Castle Britannia, and I'm going to get my levels. I'm also going to play tag with the guards. For many similar reasons. Hi guards, how are you? One of the big advantages of this is because NPC movement is so random, it gets the guards out of our way. Mm -hmm. Up here. There's five guards. I know, I'm pretty sure Phoenix already grabbed this. There's five guards in here guarding the treasure room, which is the treasury of all Britannia. There's the fifth. But we need to get in here to get the rune of spirituality, which I just picked up. And I'm going to go talk to one Hawkwind the Seer. 58, okay, and... Okay. So I just went through the process of getting my virtues back up after... being sponsored a whole bunch by the reagent shops. Mm -hmm. Um, every time I talk to Hawkwind the Seer, it will boost my spirituality by three points, but I have to wait a hundred steps between talking to him. Now, the game has kind of a lazy algorithm for figuring that out. It doesn't actually check if you've moved a hundred times. It just checks if the hundred digits of your steps are the same. I keep trying to get out. I keep getting put to sleep by his uh, fields there. I keep trying to get out because I like to interleave stuff. Man, that's uncomfortable. What kind of seer makes you fall asleep just walking in the door? I think it's supposed to be a reference to the Oracle at Delphi and the weird, uh, weird fumes. That makes way more sense. Yeah. Uh, so I'm talking to the guards now, and when I ask them about guarding, they say a guard must be a valiant warrior. They say, art thou the most valiant warrior? And I say, no, I'm not the most valiant warrior. Hi, Lord British. I'm also Lord British. I'm just a Valiant Warrior, but I'm not the most Valiant Warrior. Saying I'm the most Valiant ro Warrior would be a, uh, an act of horrible pride. Also, all the guards are back from on the first floor, so, uh, you know, whatever. So what I'm looking for when I'm passing turns, I'm waiting for my food to tick down. That's what the F uh, indicator is there. Food ticks down one point every hundred turns. Uh, when you only have one character in your party. The more characters you have, the faster it ticks down. But right now, it's only ticking down one point every hundred turns. 79. 85, 88, 91, four more. Yeah, we got a uh, donation here. Awesome. Let's hear it. We got just $10 from Rackadactylus. No message, just supporting the cause. Thanks, Rackadactylus. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. If a lot of people donate, they'll say that they'll notice that this is a really good game for this, and they'll have us back. Okay, I have to do this once more. Uh. Okay, so I've done my spirituality. I'm now going to go take care of some points of sacrifice by talking to a healer and saying, no, I'm not in need of help, and then giving 100 points of your lifeblood, 100 hit points, literally, uh, it boosts your sacrifice virtue. So and I'm... then I'm going... Oh, go ahead. I'm going back here to where Lord British keeps the entrance to the dungeon Hithloth. So I'm sailing around, and you'll notice that sometimes I cast a wind spell. That's because the direction of the wind matters a lot to how fast the boat moves. Also, grats on the boat. Thank you. Good. <laughs> yeah. 
And there's my first trimmer. I killed, I killed all but one slime, which is fleeing, and I got the Zorn fleeing. Oh, I'm so jealous. That is such a good tremor. So tremor spells are plagued with RNG. I'm just standing here to recover my magic points because that went really quickly. Search for the green stone, cast up, cast up. And I'm going into this. If I walk through the middle of the room, those fields come down and I have to deal with those monsters. Search to find a fountain, search to touch a magical ball like Phoenix did earlier. These ones raise both my intelligence and my dexterity. And unfortunately, I fell asleep, so I need to poison myself again. Now, because I'm poisoned, the sleep spells from the Reapers, which you'll see the screen flashing every so often, that's the Reapers trying to cast a sleep spell. Uh, it can't work because I'm poisoned. This game can only handle one status effect at a time. If these guys would get out of my way, that would be great. There we go. One, two. Touch the other orb. Cast is down. See where I am. Uh, that's not a good landing. Back up. One, two. One, two. One, one, two. Gremlins. Gremlins are the worst thing on the world. They will eat your food. They are eating my food. This is not good. Get away. I'm going to have to go buy more food later. Also, they attacked me, so I got lost. Um, as in me personally, not the character. It's not like getting lost is a thing that happens. More gremlins, great. And I missed, which means I don't have enough dexterity. Fuzz. Okay, I'm down in level 8, and then I go... Can't remember which way to go. There we are. I need to go. Those are more gremlins. There are lots of them. I just go past them. I don't need that. I don't need their nonsense. I need this fountain, though, which will heal me. One, two, three. That's a troll. It throws things at me. Climb up to level four. One, two. And there I got a bowl. It raises my dexterity. Dexterity is important because in this game, um, because of the way it's coded, if your dexterity is 40 points or higher, you do not miss when you attack. You just don't. So that's sort of what we're both going for. Yeah, I'm I found there. that out while I was digging through the code. And um, it's interesting because it's only that way in the DOS version. In the original Apple II version, it does not behave that way. C64 does not behave that way, and on and Shoot. on. <laughs> Missed my spot. There we are. So this is the Dungeon Shame. Um, it's actually a really interesting dungeon if you go through it all. But uh, we know where the we know where the the purple stone is. So I don't have to go through it all. I just have to drop down. Gate to eight. My turn to start a boat grind. And grab a drink. There's a boom gate. So I go to a different place in Phoenix. I don't know if you would have noticed. This is the ruins of the town of Magincia. Uh, because of the way monsters spawn in, uh, because this entire area is surrounded by water, only water monsters will spawn in. That's assuming anything ever does spawn in. Oh! It ate my input, and instead of casting heal, I'm holding up and camping. Look at that. That's, that, that's what I do. That's not a you move. That's a me move. It's huh? a marathon move. Don't, you know. <laughs> You'll walk it off. You'll be fine. You got this. Oh, yeah. It's not a big deal. Yeah. The game, has, the game buffers up to 16 inputs, which is why, if you can hear me, I'm constantly removing my finger from the spacebar. I would but, really like it if anything would show up. Boat if or I've not. ever experienced anything in marathons, it's that you only get the opposite extremes. Either great or, or terrible? Yeah, you get marathon luck or marathon, quote, luck. <laughs> So that is, that is a seahorse that's not actually useful, and you can see how it's not actually aggressive uh, because it's not actually evil, which means I can run away from it. 
Also to note, you can only have four monsters inside of your map chunk at a time. So if you get four that just wander around aimlessly like the seahorse off your screen, no monsters will spawn, which means no boat boats will spawn. Hey, Phoenix, guess how many twisters are on my screen right now? <laughs> mm, two? Just one, but it's one more than I want to see. <laughs> Twisters aren't monsters, but they eat up a monster slot, and it's going to... You know, I'm going to gate out and come back. Yeah, at one point I had a twister show up when I was doing my boat, and that's when I blinked way up north. Oh, yeah. And then blinked back down to unload it. As soon as I leave the chunk, any monsters in that map chunk disappear. So just a rehash, when we randomly see that long string of numbers, that's you checking your uh, virtue values, is that correct? That is accurate, yeah. Right on. Uh, I need to mix two more gate travels at least, because I just used two of them. And then, for all that effort... Oh! Behind that sea serpent is a boat! That's a pirate ship. Congrats. I think so. Got... It took me a thousand moves. Um... Got the, you got the boat advantage. 99 spirituality, eh? Needed. Now I'm going to go give some blood. Oh, you went to 99? Oh. What am I doing? <laughs> 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 Sorry, I didn't mean to throw you off, but... We also... Yeah, you... Go ahead. I, I usually um, go after I do the skull. Mm, right. So I just went and found the wheel from the HMS Cape. Uh, the HMS Cape sank in a storm in the Cape of Heroes there. Um, the wheel, if I use it, will raise my ship's hit points to 99 from 50. Um, that can be very useful if you're getting attacked. Of course, it doesn't actually work if your ship isn't already at 50 hit points. Where am I going? I'm going to get a skull. So the SHP is actually your ship's health score. Yeah, it it uh, it um, covers up the uh, the uh, gold. I'm going back to bed, 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 bed. Ay ay. Can your ship get attacked while you're sleeping? Uh, you can't sleep on the ship. You have to step off it. Oh. That's a tiny boat. <laughs> mm hmm. I did not kill the Zorn with my Tremor. <clears throat> what am I gonna mix? I think I killed three slimes. Oh man. I got all but one slime. I couldn't believe it. I very rarely see Tremors that good. This, this okay. is your Ultima 2 luck. Yeah. <laughs> had all the bad luck yeah. in that one. Oh, go yeah. away. I, I'm waiting for the moons to be dark, and then I can grab the skull of the Wizard Mondain, like that. The Wizard Mondain, you may remember, is someone I wiped out last night. And now I'm going back to put my boat uh, where I need it later. For Pete's sake. The wind is being the wind. Okay, this was not an intentional death. Uh-oh. I was slightly lower on my health than I thought I was. Oh no! Where's my compassion at? Guards, let's play some tag. Now, is this how guards get their cardio? Yeah, that's that's it. I'm just helping them train. Yeah, yeah, see. It's altruistic. Yep. They need the experience, that's all. <laughs> In Ultima 5, they wise up and give the guards crossbows, so doing that is a bad idea. Um... No, yes. Where's my sacrifice at? One, two, three, four. 75, okay. This would be 85, so I need three more. I, I haven't killed anything on, on land, so I haven't actually got any treasure. <laughs> so I'm, I didn't have any money. So I need to go and get what's called the three-part key. So we're going back into Hithloth. That is a Reaper. We don't like Reapers. Because they do that, they put you to sleep. One, two, three. So I'm using flaming oil. And uh, flaming oil puts a flame field. Oops. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, what, ready then? And so the Reaper's just going to stand there and die. 
in the flame field because reapers can't move. They're trees. It's the stone, yellow, green, orange, and white. Hey, and that gives me... Hey, cool. High five. Oh, good. I got poisoned. I was worried for a second there. Gazers put you to sleep. So, uh, yeah, I don't want to... I don't want to be sleepable when fighting them. Two of them can be a death sentence. Come on. I mean, even not putting me to sleep, this is not going particularly well. Gazer critical, gazer kill. Thank you. Phoenix, you seem to have made a lot of friends there. The demons? Yeah, they, they like me. Ah, you're doing your valor grind. Perhaps it's your choice of cologne. You might want to consider a different kind. So no, it's of... just, uh, just the demons in the um, altar room. Oh, in the altar room. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think we'll both be doing our Valor Grind shortly. I'll use Quickness, and I'm going to run in here and use stones, red, orange. Uh, not yellow, purple, and white. And go back out here and exit to the surface. Here we go. This is where we reload often. That's a balloon. And that's the abyss where I drop the skull of the wizard mundane. You have to hit it on that particular square. Or you raise it into the air, and uh, raising it into the air kills all monsters on the screen, but it also ruins your virtues. I had a really good drop, and then the winds just... Well, I'm in humility. I, I can't get there. Oh no. <laughs> This is one of the real-time traps of the game, the, uh, the wind when you're ballooning. The wind itself changes in real time. There we go. I think, what is it, whenever it changes, it's, it randomly picks a number of frames and then changes after that many frames. Yeah. And then uh, the balloon, of course, doesn't move on turns. You could probably see Phoenix trying to get around. Um, and this is interesting. Our roots have actually converged a bit. Because we're both about to do our Valor Grind, I would expect. Uh, I'm in the shrine now. I think you're just getting out of it. I'm just finishing. Yeah, there. I've got my second partial avatar hood. So the shrine is guarded by demons. That's why we've got the horn. Um, so there they are. So I'm going to cast Energy Field and poison myself, because sometimes demons come with Balrons. And Balrons are the other thing that throws sleep spells, and they're really obnoxious. I didn't actually check my Valor before I started this. I don't think I would be at 99. Yeah, while I was flying around, I um, kept changing away so I couldn't land because I couldn't get to the grass. Yeah. And it happened so much that I ran out of mana, and then I ran out of wind spells, oh, and, then no. ran out of, and then ran out of mana again. You did make it, though. I did make it. This also doubles as a gold grind because each of these demons is leaving behind... I just had a terrible thought. I'll bet you my boat's gone. Oh no, did you not leave a safety chest? I did not leave a safety chest. I didn't have the opportunity. Um, okay. Uh, There's something we just found out, what, a month ago? That the balloon would eat boats? Because we moved our, our boat grind used to be all, all near the end, but when I moved it very early in my run, all of a sudden all of my boats were just disappearing. Mm -hmm. So what it is is there's what a, an array of twenty four places that it can put just overworld stuff, and it always forces the balloon into the top spot on that. And it loads things in from the top spot. So if you, the boat's the first thing you get, that goes into the top spot, and then the balloon will stomp right over the top of it. So you need so to get that's... one chest. Mm -hmm. And then if you have that chest, the balloon will stomp over the chest. Mm -hmm. If that's happened, it's happened. Wow, and this is a really thing. good grind spot for money. Yep. I'm looking yeah, at good. both your feeds here, and you guys are climbing up the charts there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great for money, and it's great for valor. Because the combats come fast. 
You know, I didn't know I could do this before um, tonight. A little background tech thing for anyone listening. Um, apparently, Discord has that feature where you can watch multiple streams at once. I, cool. I didn't know you could do that. Like, I'm watching both of you at the same time in the same pop-out window in Discord. That is cool. Yeah, so these demons come in groups of eight. It's this, and when you try and get to the abyss, there's a group of eight pirate ships that appear. It's the only time you'll see more than four enemies on the map at a time, on the overworld map. Oh, the reason we throw the skull of the wizard mundane into the abyss is it gives us ten points in each, in each virtue. Yes, Just, probably should explain that. Yeah, straight up 10 points. So I used to actually sail in there to do it. If you see some of my old runs, uh, you'll see me actually sailing in there, making a bridge out of boats, because we get attacked by pirates in there, and then sailing out. Um, but Phoenix, in March of this year, I think it was, was it March? did the first ever skull bomb. That sounds right. Yeah. Yeah, it was before we got sick, I think. Yeah, um... I spent uh, the month of May with my partner and my daughter holed up in our apartment because we got the COVIDs, so... Ooh. Yeah. We're all fine. That's good. Yeah. yeah during that time, I wasn't running very much because I was working on the randomizer. Yes, Phoenix has made an excellent randomizer for this. For this particular title? Yeah. Yep. Oh, nice. Quite good. Uh, I I've like done randomizers. A... They actually would get me into games I've never played before. Well, this is a perfect time to start, then. I've been doing um, Fire Red. There's a randomizer for it called Radical Red. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. That's very good. Cool. And I had never played Fire Red before. Yeah, that might get me interested in this. <laughs> well, the game itself, like if you play it, play through it, you know, mm -hmm. normally, it's actually mm -hmm. a really interesting and fun game. And uh, part of the point of it is that you know you're not just going out to fight a great evil and be the be the the superhero. Your job is to be a good person, and that's you know um, that's sort of vetted out by the the way the the a lot of the virtues work. Um, you can't just do things randomly. I mean, if you know how to game the system, you can. <laughs> but you actually have to be, a, you actually have to live a good life if you want to win this game. You know, you have to, to give to beggars, and you have to let non-evil things go, and you have to be honest in your dealings and be courageous and honorable. It's actually a really clever way of building a game. I remember when I was first playing this game as a kid, um, I would um, while playing it, I um, would start up a character, find out I was doing something completely unvirtuous, and then reset and start over again. <laughs> and so I went through like let's say eight characters, just because it's a good number for this game, until I settled on one that I was like, okay, I'm going all the way with this one. Because one of the nice things is it doesn't just spell out exactly what you need to do to be virtuous. Uh, and so as you're learning, you learn a few things, but overall you just have to be virtuous overall, because otherwise there might be something that is programmed in that'll catch you. <laughs> And that's why uh, we've both done our spirituality grind by talking to Hawkman the Seer. Uh, you talk to him, and he'll tell you how virtuous you are. He'll give you a range of possible... Uh, it's whether or not that number is less than 20... Uh, perfect. Whether it's less than 20, between 20 and 40... Oh, hey, guards. Uh, between um, 40 and 60, between 60 and 80... Uh, between 80 and 98, or if it's at 99. Um, Ryska in chat actually has a question I was thinking, too. Um, yeah. If you were playing this casually, how would you even know what your virtue values are? You go and talk to Hawkwind a lot. 
Mm, so there's an NPC that gives you an idea then. Yep. yep. It is just an idea. It's a general a general idea. Oh, Sonora, get out of my way. Like, he'll tell you that you're a horrible person. You'll never be the Avatar if you do some of the stuff that we're doing now. Mm -hmm. Without, you know, patching it back up afterwards. Sweet. Okay, where am I going next? Um, oh, right. <laughs> where am I going next? I'm going to the, the, the shrine. <sighs> <laughs> Jason WFD said they played the NES port, and I saw that. Um, that's surprising to me that a game that seems this large with this much content fits on an NES cart. There are compromises. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the NES version does make some changes, but overall, it's still a very good game, and mm -hmm. it stays true to the um, what you. It stays true to what the game is telling. Mm -hmm. uh, some of you might notice I have a second character in my party. In order to beat the game, we need to fill our party. Eight characters strong. And it has to include one character from every one of the classes. This is important in order to show leadership in each of the virtues. That's the excuse the game gives anyway. So I'm going to collect my third character. Oh, I'm running out of heals. These characters slow us down, which is why we wait to the last possible minute to pick them up. And we have to go in here to find... Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Vorpal. That's his name. Vorpal, come on, get out of the way. Thank you. Uh, while well, I'm here, I should stop by the market. Yeah. Uh, there. Oh, can I get there? Come on, come on, come on. Oh, it's not going not gonna to do it anyway. And there is, a, there is a randomizer for the Nintendo version of this as well. Mm -hmm. Um made by Gilmock, and he is actually the re and watching Squibbins play that is the reason that I got into making a randomizer for this, which then also triggered me to get into speedrunning of this. Gilmock. And so here we are. Yeah, so um, Phoenix found me through GOG, because I had posted about this a few years ago and made a, a sample run that was, what, three hours long? I thought I think that one was only two hours long. Was it two? Yeah. I can't remember now. Um, so when I got this computer that I'm playing on right now, and I decided, well, oh, let's put GOG Galaxy on it, and there's this friend request. Okay, sure, why not? And all of a sudden, I'm in the Ultima speedrunning community. Yeah, and oh, no. Daggett, who's in chat, um, he runs this on the Sega Masters system. Oh, that's right, yeah. So, I missed the full moons. So, okay, it sounds like this game has a lot of ports. Is there, like, a, a general community um, consensus as to which is the best version to play if you have access to it? Um, it sort of depends what you're playing for. Yeah. So, casual. Let's say casual. Casual, I would suggest the Nintendo version or the Sega Masters version. They're both console versions, and the Sega Masters version came out five years after the original game, and there's a lot of bug fixes and other improvements. Quality of life mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Like a lot less mixing of spells. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, that's definitely a, a good way to go if you're new to this sort of game. I grew up on this stuff, and I'm always going to say go for the, the Apple II or Commodore 64 versions, mm -hmm. uh, just for the, the purity of it. But also, there's something really beautiful about playing this game, the, this philosophical game, in a, in a medium that requires you to be slow. This stuff takes time. You have to breathe. You have to, you know, this is frantic for me right now trying to do this. But, you know, uh, putting it in the medium of, a, of the Commodore 64 where you have to take your time, things take space to load. Um, 
I mean, that's also that's also sort of the, the stuff I love to do too. Eighty five. I need three more of the healer. Don't now, forget is there the a uh, DOS version as well. This, this is the DOS version. This is the DOS. Okay, fair enough. I was going to say because I'm going to be getting a retro PC soon, so I'm trying to see what my options are. Nice. nice. This is actually free. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, yeah this, this is free. Is free on GOG. Yeah. Man, GOG is good. <laughs> yeah, it was it was released as freeware like uh, a long time ago. Yeah, in the late 90s when Ultima Online was coming out, they released as freeware to promote uh, Ultima Online and also <laughs> in the hopes that people who were playing Ultima Online would play this and learn more about Britannia before jumping into an MMORPG. So you might notice that my entire party is poisoned. This is intentional. Why these is guys, that intentional? These guys are slowing me down. <laughs> <laughs> if, I were to, if I were to get into a combat, all of them would be in, in play. Zircon is standing in his forge. Uh, oh, Zircon, why? It is much faster for me to carry around a bunch of dead bodies uh, than it is for me to... To oh, come on, Julia. Thank you. Um, than it is for me to actually uh, deal with them in combat. Okay, Zircon's out of his forge, so we'll turn off his forge. And there's the rune of sacrifice. And I need to do sacrifice and spirituality still. Hey, I just got into Monarch. Hey, I'll wave to you as I blow by. Hope that Zircon doesn't kill me. Zircon will yep. gladly block you into the forge, and then you can just burn for a while until he moves out of the way. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our speed in this game comes from simply knowing where things are and what to do with them. Yeah, there's three main parts of the game. Exploring the overworld, talking to everyone in the towns, and then exploring the dungeons. And we try to skip all of them. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> frankly, the dungeons can be terrifying. Um, the game itself is designed in such a way that you're not likely to run into like one or two big fights that'll just wipe you out. But rather, it's a slow death. Hi, hi. Hey, I got some nightshade, because why not? So what happens generally, when things start to go wrong, they go wrong a little bit at a time, and then a little bit more, and then a little bit more. Ah, you stop you, that. And then you fight gremlins, and they steal all your food, and then you're starving in the bottom of a dungeon, and you're low on reagents. You don't have an exit spell handy, you don't have ups. Okay, I need to get that number up to 6,700. There we go, good. <sighs> Whew, little break. While I, wait for, um, while I wait for the moons to go double full, that's where the Shrine of Spirituality is hiding, in the Moon Gate. I'm, I hope you can't hear my snack on stream. I'm not hearing nothing. Cool. <laughs> Heck, I've been eating potato chips. Awesome. I have cheese and crackers. Right on. What kind of cheese, though? That's important. Sharp cheddar. Oh, good choice. Absolutely. When I was growing up as a kid, uh, I ate peanut butter and honey sandwiches for years for lunch. Uh, my daughter uh, seems to be in for cucumbers and cheese and crackers. So, we got any interesting going on chat side? A lot of commentary just about the, uh, you know, the how the game works, things things to do. Well, good. People are explaining it so we don't have to. There's been a lot of that. It's actually been pretty interesting. I'm learning some things here. That's great. Uh, someone mentioned there's an upgraded fan patch for graphics and MIDI uh, music on the DOS version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sadly we can't play with that because it messes a lot with the time. Hmm. 
And so oh, as no. far as messing with the time, do you mean it slows the game down, or is there some kind of RNG manipulation going on? Oh, there is no RNG manipulation in this. <laughs> yeah, it, it slows the game down, which then means that you have to crank the cycles in DOSBox up, which for speedrunning, that just sends everything askew. It means also that ballooning is impossible. Yeah, because the cycles are crack cranked up, the balloon moves at warp speed. Um, so <laughs> good luck getting anywhere with it. Is that but why when I've seen casually play this on sh this or other Ultimas on stream, it seems like the boat is just going at warp speed? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was wondering uh, why the heck the boat was so fast. <laughs> <laughs> the music for this game, though, is really, really good. Uh, you may or may not know from my name, but I am a musician. <laughs> and Ken Arnold is uh, an underappreciated composer. Uh, the music for this is... and Oh, that's right. For this and its immediate predecessor are quite good. Usually when I'm streaming this solo, not doing races or marathons, I just play um, MP3s with music in the background. So we at least get to enjoy the music, even if it's not a, like oh. playing wandering music while I'm out in the open. Mm -hmm. So I'm now an eight parts avatar. That means that I can grab the mystic weapons. And I have done that and the mystic armor, which I'm about to do. These things, uh, it's, they're worth 400 experience each, which is why we grab them. But also, uh, the Mystic Weapons um, are a maximum damage weapon. Oops, moved too far. Which means that they have the possibility to do... Uh, they have the possibility to do up to 255 damage on a hit. Sounds like you're a couple minutes ahead of me if you're already eight parts avatar. I'm just going to get my last levels. Just checked my stats. After picking up the mystics, I am... Uh, I, I had... I was uh, 6790, so the mystics were required. We need 6400 experience to hit level 8, and level 8 is necessary because we can't fill up our party without being level 8. Your party size is limited to the size of... or to your level. Yeah, I, just, I just I just saw in chat, yeah, Golden Flame Dragon did some of those recordings and those are some of the songs I played during my stream. So thank you, Golden Flame. Ooh. Nice. Oh my boat's still there. Oh lucky. Nice. I must have dropped a treasure chest. Oh you know what? I did drop a treasure chest when I first went to do my Mandrake grind. I didn't mean to, but an orc came along, and I figured rather than get myself poisoned, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I don't need to cast a spell. I do need to cast a spell. The wind changed again. I know how far... Like, we both have our ways to get to the, the Isle of the Avatar. Or I guess it's not called that yet. The Isle of the Abyss. Here we go. One wind north, and away we go. There's all the boats. And they actually took each other out, which was nice. And I made it through. All right. Now we have to light up the abyss. I have to remind myself of that because we don't usually do it. But before I get in there, I have to actually get there. These hills are slow, and this is lava. Use uh, the bell. Use the book. Use the candle. And then you enter. This is what a dungeon looks like. What? These are dungeon rooms. And so you can see that, that um, drawing that happens when I move from one room to the next. That doesn't appear if we don't have light. So that takes up time. So, uh, Morgan Mike, you know how I've been theorizing for a while that our XP is getting so tight that eventually we will drop below? Oh, no. Yeah. You didn't. I did. Oh, wow. So I gotta go find some stuff to fight. 
Uh, Did you make are like good. a uh, like a, a DPS check or something? Like what happened exactly? Um. So. As you're playing, you're gaining experience from killing stuff, but you also mm -hmm. gain a lot of experience from quest items. Mm -hmm. And you gain a lot of your experience from quest items. Mm -hmm. But um, as we keep tightening up the run, we um, gain less experience from killing stuff. Yeah, as we get faster. Yeah. And so like, I've actually had to work in a few quest items that in the original run I didn't get to get my experience back up. And we've now gotten to a point where we collect all of the quest items. Mm -hmm. So there, there's eight runes that are necessary to get. Each rune is worth, um, so here's an altar, we use a stone. Each rune is worth 100 points. Um, we have uh, eight stones. Each stone is worth 200 points. Those are the colored stones. I just used one to get down to the second floor here. Um, and we get, uh, there are eight quest items. The bell book and candle are the only ones that are necessary, but I also picked up, well, Phoenix also will have picked them up too. The wheel, the horn, the skull, and the mystic arms and mystic armor, which are all worth 400 points a pop. So there's 5,600 experience in the game, uh, just out of quest items. I'm going to walk through the wall. One, that's poison fields that I'm walking through, which is why you can't see anything. And these questions are always the same, and I know what order they go in. I'm going to take a moment and heal up a bit. And every so often you'll see me open my stat screen, I'm checking my magic points. Um, casually playing, you will almost never run out of magic points. You'll generally, your problem with magic points will be you don't have enough to begin with. Uh, I need to go level four east. Yeah. North through secret doors. That's what that is. These are gremlins. Oh, there's only one. Okay. That's fine. I've got enough food. That's a fire field and then a room. Cast the undead spell and then the tremor spell and hopefully it kills them all. It didn't. Undead as in turn undead. So it, undead things like the lich there uh, will, if it works on them, start to run away. Uh, this game does not have a fleeing, uh, like a, a status for fleeing other than the hit points are lower than 23. So if something is made to run away, that's because the, the only way it does that is it sets its hit points to 23. <laughs> uh, descend and... All right. I'm not used to doing with this with the lights on. Yeah, we'll just tremor these trolls. I'm in the abyss finally. Hey, good. Uh, I'm going to heal up a bit. I'm going to pause for a bit and recover my magic points because the next room is nasty and I want at least 30 points. Good, I got it. Oh, my torch wore out. Tremor. I got one Zorn to flee, but the other one's still coming at me. Zorns negate magic. You can see that N between my food and my gold. That means that I can't cast any spells. Neither can the, neither can the Belron, which is why the screen isn't flashing. So dungeons have secret panels like that one that just open entrances. And now... The worst room in the game. <laughs> I'm convinced. The Reaper room on five. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the worst worm. Oh, I didn't kill a single reaper. Oh, no. All right, let's go I mean, in with oil. Yay. <laughs> that is a lot of enemies in that room. Yeah, and they're all obnoxious. It's for five, and I'm going to burn one of them anyway. There it goes. See, it's it flaming Chat seems to concur that the Reaper room is not a happy place to be. No. It's really weird playing with the lights on. I know, right? Get my Mystic Sword back on. We're used to doing so much of this just by 
understanding and feel. All right, one, two, oh, great. One of the things about enemies with ranged weapons, when they shoot, they can't miss. So when they're shooting at you, like when they're, when they're just flinging weapons at you, sure, they can, or they're just hand-to-hand, -hand, they can miss. But anything that throws an attack across the screen, if they hit you, if, if that attack lands in your square, it will hit. Twisters. Twisters you can walk over. Like that. Tremor. Uh, Golden Flame wants to know from Phoenix. He says you used to grind gold and buy a magic wand. When did you remove that from your grind? We both used to do that, actually. Oh, that was a good tremor. Uh, I think, uh, I can't speak for Phoenix, but I stopped doing it uh, when I started putting the mystic, the mystic swords in my, like, I started grabbing the mystic swords for experience. Phoenix so may I have see... lost connection here real quick. Oh, no. I did. Am I back now? You're here, yeah. Yeah, we see you going now. But my uh, They may have to re-up you on the stream, but your uh, screen share is fine. Okay, should I, should I stop streaming and restream, or... That's going to be up to the restreamer there. Hit points, hit points. Awesome. We're both good. Awesome. I, had a, I had a bad mage room there. So, Phoenix, action... we had a question. We had a question for both of you. They asked, yep. uh, you used to grind gold and buy a magic wand. When did you remove that from the grind? Uh, when was that removed? Um, for me, it was not that long ago. Um, I started taking it out once we started grabbing the mystics for experience. Yeah, it was part of that, that experience changeover when I could no longer... Oh, wait, my magic's too low to be in this room. Um, oh, that was a mistake. <laughs> okay, I, I got this. I, um yeah there there was a couple runs where I came in and after picking up the mystic armor I no longer had enough experience so that I needed to go start grabbing the mystic sword and if I'm grabbing the mystic sword I'm not going to bother grabbing the wand anymore yeah because that gold grind takes time come on Zorn get out of there so Zorns will negate magic so you can't cast spells and I need to be able to cast spells get past that energy field uh, you must have been down for a bit because i can't say the same thing <laughs> well you both seem to be doing a little bit of a grind here just going to take a moment well actually we're actually right co coming into the end here i'm on floor eight this isn't the grind this is the last dungeon all right well let me get this in <laughs> sure fire away um <laughs> This is, of course, Speedrun Ragnarok. They are supporting, once again, Take This, which is a mental health nonprofit. The main mission is to inform the gaming community about mental health issues, provide education on different disorders and prevention techniques, and reduce the overall stigma around mental illness. So any and all contributions being made during this marathon are going towards that cause, and we appreciate each and every one of you who have helped out to that end. And mental health is an important cause, and one which I, I believe in very strongly. So I'm quite happy to be supporting this cause through my actions. Indeed, me as well. I Companion myself definitely room. have some neurodiversity struggles, so I appreciate it. Oh, Companion room went well, and I'm walking into the last room in the game before the codex. Well, if you want to take a little nap... Because I am running into problems. I ran out of dispels. Oh no! You gonna make it through? You still got your, your pearl and all that other fun stuff? Yep, I was able to mix it back up, but it means I'm going back through the maze. Oh no! I'm at the last. Blackstone. Okay. Sudden darkness, you find yourself in, alone in an empty chamber. 
the game buffers my inputs so I can put in the word of passage. And it asks me the questions in the same order every time so I can buffer them in right now. Uh, timer. Time is when the word infinity appears. I'll call it out. I don't think I spelled that right. Oh good, I did. Always worth taking a second to check if you're not sure. If you get it wrong, it will ask you again and that takes up time. And if you get three wrong, it kicks you back out to the surface. And you have to do the whole dungeon again. This is where it tells me I am well versed in the virtues of the Avatar, and I should be. I've been playing this game for 30 years. Is that all? Yeah, well, that's about all I could be playing it for. <laughs> okay, we're almost there, timer. And time. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Phoenix. Nicely done, Mike. Thank you. And then there's a little bit of an epilogue that you get sent back home. And 8,465 steps. For your own reference, your time was approximately 103.30. Cool. Nice. Couple okay, Phoenix. Back, that have been a great world record. Yeah, that's better than that's better than our, my time in our last race. Okay, Phoenix, your turn. Bring it home. <laughs> a lot of GGs from chat there. Thanks, everyone. You love to see that kind of thing when you're a streamer. <laughs> Okay, so I'm now watching you. This is the lava lizard room. It's annoying. <laughs> There's a secret switch hidden there where he just stepped. It opened up a secret switch hidden in the upper right corner of the room. Right there. Stepping in lava hurts. These guys, go away. Oh my goodness. Okay, okay. Better. Arr! <laughs> There's a problem with only being able to throw in the orthogonal directions. And that is, you know, trying to line up attacks is sometimes a pain in the neck. Okay, here he goes. Reapers. Surprise, Reapers. But see, they don't move. So they're actually easy pickings for flaming oil. Because the flaming oil just creates a sheet of fire behind them, and they stand in it. There's the companion room. You get one of each companion there to bother you. And here's the final room in the game. You got a nice tremor there. I got a pretty crummy one. And I didn't have any quicknesses left. I should have mixed some, but... Oh, ran out of magic. Yeah. So there's one trigger, it opens up this secret door in the bottom, there, and it, which opens up the passage. And I'll be quiet and let you do your codex. As Mike already explained, it buffers the input. Questions can be kind of tricky the first time through. So I've certainly seen people get kicked out before. Just 
reflect upon my own humility. Um, I made a lot of mistakes this this run through. <laughs> well, you didn't do too badly. I mean, you were right behind me. But it makes sense for Lord British to win this. <laughs> Good on him to get out of the castle. Stretch his legs. <laughs> get some stuff done. Don't always rely upon strangers from another world. <laughs> Also, when typing in infinity, there's one character that's just thrown away at the beginning. That's time, by the way. Yeah. Good show, man. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, I always hit the backspace before I start typing the word infinity, just to make sure I don't accidentally double tap a character or something. The first input, for whatever reason, just doesn't happen. Yeah, I always double tap I. Mm -hmm. So that first I gets eaten. Thank you for all the GGs. Thank you, Daggett. Local one, Jason W F D, Curse Latch, everyone else up above that I'm sure I missed. I, I should well. open I should open Twitch chat and see see what people are saying. Thank you, Daggett, Mr. Cloudy Shoe. So Thank many wonderful you. people. And if this if this is something that interests you, by all means get in touch with us. Come on, join the Discord. We can always use more people to play. This is a fantastic game, it's a fantastic run. It's lots of, you know, it's a good time and we're good people. Well, I mean, most of them are good people. I'm also involved, but whatever. Uh. <laughs> and it, it's still a run that's heavily in flux. As you saw, our routes were very different. But when I play it correctly, our times come in very, very close to each other. Yeah, so there, if we've got time, um, when we first started running, we started the, the story of when we first started running together. Um, we pushed our times down to about 75 minutes or so on, on a route. And then things started getting added in, like skull bombing and things like that. Uh, we were down to 70 minutes. And then I think it was like 108. And then we had our first race three weeks ago or so. And I came in at 104. And then Phoenix promptly beat me at 102. And then we were both pushing for that sub hour. And I was sitting there on stream and sweating and coming in, and I saw Phoenix come in about 40 minutes into my run, and I'm delving the, delving the abyss, and I'm getting to that last room, and I'm saying, hey, Phoenix, look at that timer, look at that timer. Came out at 58, what was it, 58.40? Or 58.50, something like that? Beat mm -hmm. the hour. And then Phoenix tells me that just a few minutes before he joined my chat, he'd done the same, 57.45. Yeah. So. Yeah, I had... I, I... I was in the middle of my run, and all of a sudden a notification pops on my phone saying "Organ Mike is streaming." And I was like, "Oh no, I have to, I have to do this." And then uh, I turned around and did a second run and came in fifty-seven twenty, and that's where the world record stands right now. But like so, said, so, so I got sub hour, and I didn't get mm -hmm. to hold the world record for even three hours. <laughs> But you did get the first sub hour. I can't take that away from you. Unless I go and kill the right gesture and get the right key. <laughs> there is also uh, any percent with glitches category. Mm -hmm. uh, I got that sub hour last spring, and that one has mm -hmm. stuff where you just skip all the dungeon rooms. You just walk through the walls. Yeah, it's, it's actually it's a really neat run. Uh, I have not, I have not tried that one yet. I'm going to have to at some point, just because it's so much fun. But uh, yeah, and the other thing is, I mean, currently the any percent is at roughly the same, the, the same uh, time. At the, the any percent record is roughly the same time as the no major glitches. So uh, we have to, we have to do something to grind that any percent down a bit. But I mean, That's this is unusual a, for an any percent. It's just because we had we we both started working on the no major glitches after after Phoenix beat the hour on the any percent. We just haven't gone back to it yet. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't going to go back coming up to uh, the marathon because I didn't want to completely confuse myself. <laughs> yeah, justice does not apply to walls in the chat. That's very true. <laughs> 
So yeah, that's the game. I and mean, there's there's lots that, as Phoenix said, the roots are in flux constantly. I am an obsessive rerouter. I was just thinking about something I could change earlier today, and I said, no, nope, stop thinking about it, because you, you pull one block out of the Jenga tower, and the whole thing falls over. And all of a sudden, you think, hey, it'd maybe be a little faster to do this before that, and all of a sudden, you've changed a third of your route. So, <laughs> but, you know... Uh, it's definitely a worthwhile game. It's definitely a worthwhile experience. If uh, RPGs are your thing, and you know you're watching the RPG Valkyries, so you know maybe they are. Uh, if RPGs are your thing, by all means, come and join us and have some fun. Anything else before we take off? Should, any more questions or? Looks like that about covers it, but that was mm -hmm. pretty cool. I had only ever seen like some casual gameplay of this before, and then you guys destroyed it in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> this took my dad what fifty or sixty hours to get to the codex on the Commodore sixty four when I was you know five years old. So <laughs> and now I'm doing it. Took took me twenty five years to beat it for the first time. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> so yeah, the world record has come down a bit since then. So yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah, Phoenix, thank, you, thank for, you for the race. It was wonderful. Yeah, thanks thank for you being for on the channel. Yeah. Yes, thanks for hosting. And to the RPG Valkyries for having us on. All right, I'll be folks. back tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs>